This hack tip is brought to you by Hack5 and viewers like you. Support us directly at hackshop.com. Welcome to Hack Tip, the show where we break down concepts, tools, and techniques for hackers, gurus, and IT ninjas. I'm Shannon Morrison. Today, we are checking out more Wireshark and expressions. Now, one question that I got from last week's episode was, what happens to the rest of your packets when you use the filter box? So, I wanted to explain this filter box up here a little bit. So, this specifically is called the box for display filters. So display filters are anything that are going to change the display that you get on your output menu, all the different packets that you see down here. So if I go up here and I change something to IPP address equals equals, and this is a pretty simple one, but you'll get the idea, 0.59. So I'm looking specifically for this address of 0.59. I hit enter, it's gonna erase anything that does not have to do with 0.59. You'll notice if it does, I can still view it, hence display filter. So whenever you use it after running a packet capture, it'll just display whatever you typed in. Everything else is simply omitted until you clear the filter text box, and then everything appears back again. So it's just stored in the Wireshark memory, and it does come back. It doesn't get fully erased. So you can still save your entire packet capture. You'll just be able to save separate things depending on the display box. Now the expression box will basically fill in the expressions the same way. If I click on expression over here, so I'm going to erase this real quick, hit enter, bring back everything. So if I hit expression box, this is pretty interesting, right? You can choose a field name, so I could choose any preferred expression. So I'll just do IPv4. Let's go down to IP. There it is, IPv4. So I'll click in here and choose IPP.ADDR, and then I can choose any kind of relation. So the relation can be equals equals for it equals, uh, does not equal, greater than, less than, greater than or equal, or less than and equal. So I'll just choose equals equals, and then it will give me the option to put in a value. So the value for an IPv protocol would be the IP address. You can also choose from predefined values if that's available. So predefined what values will pretty much just be whatever Wireshark assumes that you might want to plug in as the value for whatever the field name might be. And I'll choose, I'll just use the same IP address as my default. So I'll just do the 10.73, 31.59. And when I hit enter, it'll plug it in for me up here. It'll go ahead and show the display for all of the ones having to do with that specific IP address that you entered into the expression box. Yay! Now if you hit enter, that filter already runs for you. You don't have to type in anything yourself. If you want to save your filter, you can also do that. You can just sit, hit save over here and then enter a filter name. For example, I'll just put in example one and then hit OK, and it'll save right over here, pretty much kind of like a little bookmark. So you'll see I have hack tip one over here, which shows a IP address that I used on a different network. So I can hit example one, and that'll show me the recent packet capture with just this IP, IP address. So pretty easy. Now you can just click on the bookmark filter and it'll run for you. Yay, less typing is always good. Now let's have some more fun. If you wanna view packets of a specific size, that's kind of cool. You can actually do that. You can type in frame.length or L-E-N, len, and then I'll do greater than, I'm sorry, less than or equal to 128, and then hit enter. And it'll show me any packets that are that specific size, less than or equal to 128. If I switch that around, do greater than, It'll show me the ones that are greater than 128. Or I could do equals equals, or I could do the exclamation mark equals for just not equal 128, greater than or less than by themselves, or I guess that would be backwards for you guys. And if I have two expressions that I wanna combine, I could also use the and and, the ampersand ampersand, the two pipes so for not, uh, does not equal. And then I could use not or zor. So that's XOR. So XOR means one and only one condition must be true. So it's either the first one or the second one. And nor means neither condition is actually true. Now I'll have a couple of other expression options for you as well as a few other handy tips right after the break. More after our sponsor. 
The Hack Shop is Hack 5's premier store for all of your pen testing needs, including one of my favorites, the USB Rubber Ducky, which looks like a flash drive and it types like a keyboard, and it can type scripts into a computer ridiculously quickly, like this week's favorite from Koya Saikun. Now this script replaces, say, a site's IP with your chosen server's IP for the host file. Now of course we couldn't do the show without your support, so we would like to thank you with something special. Use the coupon code SNUBS, S-N-U-B-S with any order out of the entire hack shop for your very own signed hack tip stickers. And again, thank you so, so much for supporting this show. We're back with more Wireshark expressions and super much fun times with the filter box. Super much fun times, because that makes sense. Now, I'm gonna move on with some longer IP address filters that I came up with. So you might end up writing something that's really, really long. And you might wanna use this filter several different times and not have to type it in every single time. Now, of course, I could use the little save button that I showed you earlier over at the side, but you do have a lot of other options to save them as well. Now you can use the save button next to that filter display box, or you can also use the filter button next to the box. So if I went over here and I hit filter, I could create this new filter, a filter string down here, and I can name it something new. So I could type in, I'm gonna hit copy on this, hit new, and we're gonna call it example two. Hit apply, and now you have a new filter right here that you can always access, and it's saved for me, yay! Lastly, you can also use the Analyze Display Filters option. So this is found under the Analyze toolbox, and if you go over to Display Filters, you have a whole bunch of different options. Basically the same exact box, but it's just another way that you can get to it. Now let's have some fun with endpoints. So this is where the data is going to and coming from. So there's usually a two-ended conversation happening within your packet captures. So you have your source and then you have your destination. And generally there's nothing in between those two sources, destination and source. Now to see traffic between endpoints, you can click on statistics and then go to endpoints. So if you go up to the statistics, go down to endpoints, and it might take a little bit of time to load if you have a really, really long packet capture, but this is gonna show you everything that's involved in those endpoints. You can also click on statistics and go to conversations. So it looks kind of similar. So I'll close that and go to statistics, choose conversations. So you'll notice they both have the same icon except one has two. So click on that one and it has conversations. It takes a little bit of time to load again. But you'll notice in this one, you have address A for your source and address B for your destination. And those are separated by some kind of protocol. So for example, I'll click on address A and you'll see several of the same ones. So I have the Synology. There's a couple of different Synologies, but they have different address B, so different destinations. If I go down to this one, FB, so you may see several different FB ones, this IPv4, let's see, what is this, MCAS underscore FB, maybe, I don't know, Facebook, Samsung, Intel Core, Apple, so it looks like it's reaching out to a whole bunch of different destinations. And if you have several different ones going to the same destination, those will also be separated by what kind of protocol it's in. So this can be very, very handy if you just wanna break things down just a little bit more so you can focus in on a specific source or a specific destination instead of having to fill out some kind of uh, specific expression in your filter box. Now, another way to make things easier. I love when things are easier. Let me know what you think below, or you can send me a comment. You can email us over at tips at hack5.org. I do read all of the emails, so thank you so much for all of your comments. And be sure to check out our sister show, Hack5, for more great stuff just like this. I'll be there reminding you to trust your technolust. <laughs>